You're watching KCCI, Channel 8, Des Moines. Iowa's news leader and home of live Super Doppler. This is KCCI News Channel 8 at 10. From a spiritual standpoint, it, it makes me very, very nervous. Is it true? Did scientists really create a human clone? Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Kevin and Jeanette have tonight off. A Florida scientist who believes aliens created life on Earth says she made the world's first human clone. The baby girl called Eve was born yesterday in Hollywood, Florida. But so far, the scientists at CloneAid have refused to identify the parents or provide a picture of the baby. Scientists say the child is a clone of her mother, a 30-year-old American woman. Scientists say the parents are proud of their genetic creation. The parents are happy, and I hope that you remember them when you talk about this baby, not like a monster. The doctor is a member of a group called Raelians. They believe the Earth was created by extraterrestrials and that cloning leads to eternal life. The cloning claim has triggered a lot of talk even right here at home. News Channel 8's Michelle Parker talked with Iowans for tonight's top story. So what are people out there saying, Michelle? Well, many say it's very hard to believe and others say it's just not right controversial group. Researcher Robert Bienkowski reads the latest about a group's claim of a cloned baby and voices doubt. We don't know about their credentials. We don't know where they did it. The sample is done. CloneAid says the story is true, but Bienkowski says cloning animals still isn't fully understood. It's very difficult to clone mice, even more difficult to clone cows. Uh, the animals that have been born oftentimes manifest developmental abnormalities. News of the supposed newborn clone leaves many Iowans uneasy. It should be just left natural. I don't think that scientists should be interfering with this sort of thing. I think we've overstepped our bounds as human beings. I think cloning goes a little over the edge. Not everyone is against it. I think it's pretty cool. Technology is cool. Uh, I'd like to see more of it, I guess. Binkowski says society needs to decide how far it really wants to go with cloning humans. That's a debate for everybody, not just scientists or politicians, to take part in. Now, Dr. Bienkowski says therapeutic cloning is something that doesn't have as many ethical implications. Therapeutic cloning is when there's an attempt to clone organs like livers or kidneys to replace diseased or damaged ones. Okay, certainly a controversial topic. Oh, certainly. Thanks, Michelle. A team of independent experts will examine the baby. They'll test the girl's DNA to see if she really is a clone of her mother. Those results should be back sometime next week. Meanwhile, President Bush is calling on Congress to ban all human cloning. Right now, human cloning is allowed in the United States with FDA approval. A Gilmore City family says God was watching over them this morning when their house exploded. Gilmore City is between Pocahontas and Humboldt in northern Iowa. Around 8 o'clock this morning, Pat Sirks was making coffee in the kitchen while her husband and two daughters were still in bed. Suddenly, an explosion blasted through the house. Somehow, all four got out safely before the house then burned to the ground. I was laying in bed and then all of a sudden I heard this kaboom and I just like... I, was, I covered my head and all, the windows blew in and the, like all of a sudden the ceiling fell on top of me. It's just really scary. And the family says an investigator with the state fire marshal's office thinks an underground gas leak outside the house penetrated the basement and then the gas ignited. And in Pella, a fire at the American Wood Fibers plant is still smoldering. The fire started after an explosion at the plant early this afternoon. The plant turns wood shavings into sawdust for livestock bedding. Somehow those dust particles sparked the blast, which, could, which was felt to block away. Luckily, no one was injured. And now for the latest on Iraq. Thousands of U.S. troops and two aircraft carriers will soon be in the Persian Gulf. Elizabeth Sanchez shows us how the showdown with Saddam is heating up. More signs that war with Iraq is imminent. The Pentagon has ordered the Navy to prepare two aircraft carriers to be ready to sail the seas around Iraq within 96 hours' notice. One of them is the USS George Washington, which just returned from the Persian Gulf last week and is considered the best prepared for battle. Each carrier group includes about 7,500 sailors. Two amphibious assault vessels are also gearing up for action in early January. And the hospital ship, USS Comfort, is brushing up on its bedside manner. 
Floating Trauma Center for Combat Casualties has been ordered to leave its home port of Baltimore by Monday. But as the U.S. military buildup continues near Iraq, North Korea appears to be looking for a fight of its own. North Korean troops have begun bringing machine guns into the demilitarized zone bordering South Korea, a violation of the 1953 armistice ending the Korean War. North Korea has also demanded that U.N. nuclear inspectors leave the country. The communist nation plans to reopen a lab capable of producing plutonium for nuclear weapons. White House officials criticize the removal of the inspectors, but they say the U.S. is not about to engage in a war with North Korea. Elizabeth Sanchez, CBS News, Washington. And as Elizabeth mentioned, the U.S. is also keeping a wary eye on North Korea and its suspected nuclear weapons program. That continues our look at world headlines tonight. U.N. inspectors say they aren't going anywhere. That's the response after North Korea ordered the inspectors to leave the country. At the same time, reactivating a nuclear complex. The North Korean government claims it needs the plant to produce electricity, but the White House isn't buying it. And the Bush administration is demanding that the country shut down its nuclear program. A simple traffic stop turns into a high-speed chase in Ohio when the driver tries to escape police. As cops surround the suspect with their vehicles, he reverses, hitting a cruiser and then speeding off. The driver then speeds through a business district, ramming another cruiser and finally just keeps on going. He was finally stopped 16 miles later. And a massive windstorm is sweeping through the Pacific Northwest, causing minor injuries and downing power lines and trees. Two elderly women were hurt when a large tree branch fell on them, and in Portland, winds snapped a power line, causing it to fall across a mail truck. Back here at home, a lot of kids found the cure for cabin fever tonight. They hit the slopes at Sleepy Hollow Sports Park. Kids have been off for the holiday, and those who had been hoping for snow sure found it tonight. They had a blast skiing, snowboarding, and tubing down the hills at Sleepy Hollow. Well, no real snow for us this Christmas, and we may make it through the end of the month with no moisture at all. John's over in the weather lab with the latest on that and much more. John? Well, it doesn't look real positive, at least for the next couple of days. One thing for sure, it will be mild as we head into the weekend. Outside right now, school net temperatures have been steadying out as some clouds move across the region. 32 in Audubon, 30 up in Rockwell City, upper 20s as you head off to the east around Newton and also in Pella. Your weather headlines tonight, a few clouds will be passing overhead. A little patchy fog possible as well, but should not be a significant problem. Temperatures on Saturday, we're talking 50 plus, so good news there. We'll have more details in just a few minutes. Break out the shorts. Well, almost. <laughs> okay, thanks, John. Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes say the sunny skies of Miami will take a get little getting used to. See why the Hawks had kind of rough practice today. That's coming up in a special bowl coverage report, but first, President Bush is now calling for Congress to extend unemployment benefits, but it may be too late for workers who lose their benefits tomorrow. I'm Paul Spellman in Washington. I'll have that story coming up. You're watching KCCI News Channel 8 at 10. Iowa's news leader with Kevin Cooney, Jeanette Trumpeter, Heidi Soliday Sports, and meteorologist John McLaughlin with exclusive live Super Doppler weather. This is KCCI News Channel 8. Welcome back to News Channel 8 at 10. Thousands of unemployed Americans will lose their benefits tomorrow, including 4,600 Iowans. That's because Congress didn't approve a plan to extend federal coverage. But as Washington reporter Paul Spellman now shows us, there may be hope in the new year. Antonisha Holmes lost her job as a security officer in June. Since then, the 30-year-old mother of three has had to rely on unemployment checks. That's the only income I'm getting right now, so it helps a lot. But after six months of scouring the want ads for work, Holmes' state benefits run out this week. Normally in tough times, the federal government gives workers another 13 weeks of benefits. But because the House and Senate couldn't agree on a plan, most federal unemployment benefits stop tomorrow. It means that approximately 780,000 workers will lose their benefits uh, prematurely. Employment experts say every week without federal help, another 95,000 people run out of unemployment insurance as the slow economy makes it harder to find a new job. After weeks of silence on the issue, President Bush is now calling for Congress to extend unemployment benefits as soon as possible. And there's growing pressure from several senators as well. But others note that the overall unemployment rate is less than in previous recessions. They say writing more government checks would cost too much. That's little comfort for Antonisha Holmes. For the past, what, seven, eight months? Oh, yeah, I've been stressed out a lot. But um, 
I've been trying to maintain for my children's sake. She hopes when Congress comes back, it'll give her a little bit more time. In Washington, Paul Spellman, KCCI News Channel 8. And even if Congress does approve new federal unemployment benefits in January, analysts say there will be a two to three week delay before workers start getting the checks again. Iowa's unemployment rate actually went down last month. The jobless rate for November was 3.9%. It's about 63,000 Iowans. The October rate was 4.1%. Iowa Workforce Development says the state is showing improvement when you compare it to the national unemployment rate, but the economy hasn't yet recovered. And we still don't know who the winner of the hot lotto drawing is. Yesterday, we told you someone bought the winning ticket worth $2.7 million. That happened at this Hy-Vee store in Denison. So far, the winner hasn't come forward, but Iowa lottery officials do encourage winners to do financial and legal planning before claiming those large prizes. Well, still to come, Heidi Soliday is with the Hawks down in Miami. But she sneaked a look at the competition, too. See how the Trojans are preparing for the big Orange Bowl showdown. And we'll look west to Boise, see what the weather's doing there and your local weather when we come back. This live Super Doppler 8 forecast is sponsored by Dodge. Keeping Central Iowa ahead of the storm. Your live Super Doppler 8 forecast. Quiet night here in the capital city. Hey, look, it's the Lion King or something like that out at Jolly Holiday Lights. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, Jolly Holiday Lights will continue until New Year's Day. So just a few days left, 26 few clouds starting to move over, but uh, right over Des Moines, I just looked out the window moments ago and you can still see some stars. Winds out of the south at about 7, the wind chill factor at 18, our dew point is 23, humidity then works out to 88%, and the pressure falling in the last couple of hours at 30.06. Our number one school net site for the month of December is Pella Middle School. They had more hits, more people actually looking at the site than any other school out there. Winds now southwesterly at 9, 29 degrees, current wind chill there at about 19. West Elementary in Knoxville is our runner-up with more than 13,000 folks looking at that site, 31 degrees currently, southwest winds at about 10 miles per hour. And our latest school net site in Perry taking off with more than 1,000 hits already, 30 degrees currently, south winds at 9, your wind chill factor 22, all this information now updating every minute at the iowachannel.com. You can actually get the same kind of graphic that we show you here on TV. Across the state, temperatures right now cooling off, 28 for Dodge and Sioux City, 30 around Ottumwa. We do have some clouds starting to move into northern Iowa, and that should help hold temperatures a bit. Across the upper Midwest, 31 Minneapolis, around 30 in Chicago. Work your way out to the west, Billings at 45. Seattle, very stormy out in this portion of the country, and you'll see why in a moment. And down in Miami, if you look way down here to the bottom, it's 64 degrees, so not too bad out there tonight. Here's what's going on from the satellite perspective. You heard about the storms in Portland. We have one storm after another that is moving on the western coast, but as these storms move across the Rockies, they tend to pretty much fall apart. All we're left with are clouds, and that's what you see moving across Iowa now, some high clouds. We'll see a little patchy fog tonight as well across the southeast. Fairly quiet now after a stormy last couple of days. Overnight tonight, weak disturbance to the north will produce some flurries across Minnesota, some clouds passing over Iowa. The main feature for us will be westerly winds tomorrow, bringing in wacky, warm weather with temperatures again in the 50-degree range as we head into Saturday. High temperatures across Iowa again around 50 degrees. Head down south and west, temperatures up around 60. For tonight, though, we'll call high clouds moving across the region. A little patchy fog. The dew point temperature is spread only a couple degrees right now. Southwest winds at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. For Saturday, 55 here in the metro, should see plenty of sunshine and those warm westerly winds, 10 to 15, blowing across an unhappy Cornhusker country and on into Iowa. Here's your five-day forecast as temperatures will be slightly cooler on Sunday. Monday, a front moves through the region, but again, very little moisture with it. That means only a slight chance for precipitation in 37. Cooler temperatures as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the 30s. I forgot to show you Boise weather, but it's snowing in the mountains north of Boise, 28 uh -huh. degrees right now. There it is. There's the radar from the Internet. You can see Boise hey, hey. there by the little mouse cursor. At least they get something to talk about out there. It's getting a little boring here. Maybe I'll move out there for a few weeks. There you go, and you could get some skiing in while That's you're at right. it. I okay. like the black diamond runs. Oh, yeah, you would be yes. one of those. All right. Thanks, John. 
Well, the new year is a good time to adjust your investment strategy. In tomorrow's Des Moines Register, learn which mutual funds deliver the highest returns. And for you singles, Iowa Life looks at matchmaking websites to help you find the perfect cyber mate. And the Register writes about some of Iowa's lesser known players from today's Hawkeye football practice in Miami. Speaking of Miami, Heidi Soliday was at that practice today. She says the Hawks worked up quite a sweat, so let's go bowling. That's next. Closed captioning of KCCI News Channel 8 is sponsored by the Iowa Clinic, providing excellence in health care. Find out more at iowaclinic.com. Lots of Iowa fans will be flying to Florida this weekend to join their Iowa Hawkeyes at the Orange Bowl. Heidi Soliday is already there, and she got a little practice time in with the team, right, Clint? That's right. She mostly took part in the tackling drills today with the team. <laughs> Excellent. That's not true. But anyway, Heidi Soliday is uh, taking us inside the first Iowa practice down in Miami. All that warm weather may sound great to us, but it takes some getting used to when you're preparing for the biggest game of your season. Clint, it was a beautiful day here in Miami Shores, Florida. The Hawks worked out for a couple of hours at Barry University, and the warm weather made the practice a little difficult. It's kind of an adjustment going from the cool atmosphere that we've been in up in Iowa to a little bit heated down here. So we still have a few kinks and things like that to work on, but the good thing about it is we have a lot more time to work on it. Uh, a little ragged, yeah, a little ragged, about what we expected. The guys yeah. moved around real well last night, and uh, uh, but today that was a little bit, a uh, little ragged. We, we were uh, tired there at the end, which is part of the intent. Today was a rough practice. It was one of this, probably the hardest practice we're gonna have since we uh, going to be down here. It was pretty, you know, rough, you know, coming back into it. But it, it, it came as it went by. It got, it, it got better, you know. Not every Hawkeye thought practice was less than smooth. Just got our legs back under us and stuff like that, but. I think we did pretty well today. While Iowa hit the field at Barry University, Southern Cal was up north at Nova Southeastern in Fort Lauderdale. The Trojans also working out the kinks. Intense. Uh, we thought we was going to come out sluggish today, but, you know, the offense is intense, the defense is intense, and, you know, we look ready. We're just going to have to come out and, and execute our stuff. They're, they're a real good defense and a real good team, so we're going to have to come out and, and, and just try to out execute and try to get the win. For the most part, coach has done a good job of making us aware of what's going on, trying to keep us focused. First two days, basically, just uh, give the guys a chance to get the lay of the land, get some work done. Uh, we'll give them a little time to explore. And now when we uh, get started next next workout, we'll have our focus for the ball game. Clint, the Hawks don't have a practice on Saturday, but on Sunday, they're going to be working it at a beach party, not south, up north in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, Heidi. She'll be keeping us informed of all the wheelings and dealings down in South Florida this weekend. Then she'll be joined by Steve Carlin starting Monday kickoff for the Orange Bowl, 7 p.m. on Thursday, January 2nd. The Iowa State football team continues its preparation for the Humanitarian Bowl, and this, in many respects, is the second bowl game of the year for the Cyclones. The first, of course, the season-opening trip to Kansas City to play Florida State. That game actually had a larger payout to the university than the Humanitarian Bowl. Let's just hope this upcoming game can even come close to being as thrilling as the one in KC. I'm sure a lot of people looked at our schedule and who we played and where we played them, and they said their bowl game's in Kansas City. That's their bowl game, and we fooled them. We got a bowl game at the beginning of the season over a million dollars and a great experience. We got a bowl game uh, at the end of the season representing the Big 12 and this university, and, and again, doing something that's never been done in the history of this place. So we're really looking forward to it. Our very own Mark Hansen and Eric Meisenheimer will be, <laughs> we'll be out in Boise starting tomorrow to cover the Cyclones as they prepare for their game on the morning of the 31st. And we'll be right back to take a look at the bowl we played today. Stay with us. Nebraska football fans have come to expect nothing less than excellence out of their team. And this season was something less than excellent. Cornhuskers taking on Mississippi in the Independence Bowl. Dewan Gross takes the Mississippi punt and goes 60 yards. Nebraska up 17 to 10 after that one, but Eli Manning brings Ole Miss back 313 yards through the air for Manning. He just hands that one off to Toward Sanford, Mississippi with the lead. Cornhuskers with one last shot, and the Jamal Lord desperation heave will be picked off by Travis Johnson. Mississippi ends Nebraska's 40-year streak of winning seasons with a 27-23 victory in Shreveport. NU finishes at 7-7. Seven seven. The Houston Bowl in Houston, Southern Miss and Okie State. Midway through the fourth, tied at 23. Tatum Bell changing that. 22 yards into the end zone. 
Southern Miss with the Cowboys backed up deep in their own territory. And Tatum Bell will do it again. Oklahoma State goes on to win the Houston Bowl by 10 over Southern Miss. The Holiday Bowl, Arizona State and Kansas State. ASU's Andrew Walter with the fade to Justin Taplin. Sun Devils build a 10-0 lead before Darren Sproles can take off on this 41-yard touchdown run. As it stands right now, it is 27-20, Arizona State leading it in the fourth. Well, if you're sick of football, the Iowa men's basketball team is doing some traveling as well, and not just on the court. They resume their season tomorrow in Tulsa against the 20th-ranked Golden Hurricanes. Iowa currently stands at 7-2, coming off of an 87-49 win against basketball powerhouse Liberty last weekend. The Iowa State women are in South Padre, and they will take on Detroit Mercy tomorrow night. That will hopefully be a tune-up for them before they take on Duke on Sunday. And tennis's Serena Williams has been voted Female Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press. 61 matches this year. Williams lost only five times and won a combined 9-0 versus sister Venus and Jennifer Capriotti. Lance Armstrong won for the men. Kind of a no-brainer. He won his fourth straight Tour de France this summer. Boy, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Clint. We'll be right back. Today's Market Report is sponsored by the Des Moines office of A.G. Edwards & Sons. Okay, John has a look at the last week of this year. Oh, the end is near, you mm -hmm. might say. <laughs> Temperatures steady in the mid-20s tonight, 55 tomorrow. More clouds on Sunday, a little cooler, and Monday and Tuesday back into the 30s. So enjoy the weekend. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with another look at all the folks out at Sleepy Hollow, in addition to all the people who help us do this every day. <laughs> thanks for joining us.